Hello. In this lecture, we'll study quadratic functions. Now, for those of you in pre-calculus, this should be mostly review, although perhaps not entirely. So if there's a little bit that's new, don't worry about it. We're going to go over it all. We're going to go over the general and vertex forms for quadratic functions, as well as the graphs of quadratic functions through finding the vertex and x-intercepts. We'll also solve quadratic equations and model certain situations using them. Now, a quadratic function is a function f of x of the form a number times x squared plus a number times x plus a number. So the only term the variable x appears is as x squared and x. Otherwise, they're just being multiplied by numbers added together, perhaps with a plus c added on at the end. This is the general form of a quadratic function. It can also be written in vertex form as a times x minus h squared plus k. So as an example, f of x equals x squared, that's 1x squared plus 0x plus 0, that's a quadratic function. g of x is 1x squared plus 10x minus 7, that's a quadratic function. And h of x is given in vertex form, negative 2 times the quantity x plus 3 squared minus 1. Now we can convert back and forth between the two forms using simple and standard algebra. If you have vertex form, so you have something in this form right here, and you want to get it to look like this, all you have to do is expand the x minus h squared, distribute the a, and collect like terms. If, however, you want to go from the general form to the vertex form, we are going to complete the square, which is a bit more work, but still quite doable. So our first example, let's let h of x be negative 2 times the quantity x plus 3 squared minus 1, and we want to get this in general form. Well, all we have to do is expand everything out. So first we deal with the parentheses x plus 3 squared. If you square that out, you'll get x squared plus 6x plus 9. Now we can distribute the minus 2, negative 2x squared minus 12x minus 18. And now we have these like terms of minus 18 and minus 1 that we can combine to negative 19. So there is the general form, negative 2x squared minus 12x minus 19. Now we can convert from a general form to a vertex form. It's a bit more work, and we're specifically going to walk through the steps when a is equal to 1, when you simply have a 1x squared, with a remark at the end as to how you would do it if a was not 1. So our example will be 1x squared plus 10x minus 7. The first thing you do is identify what is b and associated what is b over 2. Now in our example, b, the number multiplying x, is 10, which means that b over 2 is 5. Now you're going to add and also subtract b over 2 squared to the entire expression. So you had x squared plus bx, and you're going to add b over 2 squared. Then you had plus c, and now we're going to subtract b over 2 squared. So these two terms would cancel out, which means we haven't really changed anything. Now in our example, b over 2 was 5, so we're going to add 5 squared and subtract 5 squared. This gives us x squared plus 10x plus 25, and then the minus 7 and a minus 25 give us minus 32. Observe, if you combined these terms, you'd get minus 7, which would bring you back to where we started. So it's all true, but you don't want to do that because the whole point is that what we have created, this x squared plus bx plus b over 2 squared, this expression factors as x plus b over 2 squared. So in our example, the x squared plus 10x plus 25 can be factored as x plus 5 squared, so that minus 32 hangs off the end. And now we have vertex form. Okay, If you have x plus b over 2 squared, remember in vertex form you want to have a minus h, so this is minus minus b over 2. And then the k being added on at the end is exactly this c minus b over 2 squared. So in our example, h is minus 5 and k is minus 32. Now, if the leading coefficient a isn't equal to 1, so you don't just have a 1x squared, you have something else, 7x squared, negative 3x squared, etc. The first step you're going to do from your general form here at the top is factor an a out of everything. So if you factor an a out of ax squared, you're left with just a 1x squared. But here you would have a b over a, and here you'd have a c over a. So from that expression, x squared plus b over ax plus c over a, which is all being multiplied by a in the original, so you have an a factored out of all of this, complete the square on this expression here that does have x squared multiplied by 1, and then multiply back the a at the end. And we'll see an example later on of doing this.
Now, how do we graph quadratic functions? The graph of a quadratic function is a particular shape called a parabola. So for example, we have f of x is x squared, g of x is minus x squared plus 4, h of x is 2x squared minus 6x minus 8. Here's the graphs of these quadratic functions. So first, for f of x equals x squared, we could plot a couple of points. If x equals 0, then y equals 0. If x equals 1, 1 squared, we get y equals 1. But observe, if x is negative 1, negative 1 squared is also positive 1. So we have 0, 0, but then we have 1, 1, and also minus 1, 1. And in fact, since any number squared will be the same thing as a minus number squared, if I plug in 2, I get out 4. If I plug in minus 2, we we'll still get positive 4, etc. So we have a nice symmetry to the shape here. Also, plugging in a few points to g of x will give us uh, negative 2 and positive 2 will both produce a 0, whereas x equals 0 would result in a 4. We get this shape here. And for h of x, plugging in a few points, uh, negative 1, 1 1.5, and 4 being chosen for a particular reason that we'll see later on. But here is the shape you would get if you graphed this in a calculator or computer algebra system. Now, the shape of a parabola can be described in two different ways. If it opens upward, this corresponds to the leading coefficient a being positive. We call this function concave up. In other words, this would be like a cup that you could fill with water. This is called concave up. If, however, it opens like a hill, so it's now a cup turned upside down, this is concave down, and this happens when a is negative. Now the point where a parabola changes from going down to up, or from going up to down, is called the vertex of the parabola, and this is a word we've seen before for vertex form of a parabola, and that's not a coincidence. So the, the vertex and x-intercepts of a parabola are useful for graphing a parabola, and they provide very important information about the function that you began with. So we might want to find the vertex of a parabola. Now, if it's given in vertex form, the vertex simply is h comma k. However, if it's given in general form, we would need to complete the square. Now, remember, we've done this on the previous slide. If this was a 1, you would end up with negative b over 2 as the x-coordinate of the vertex. However, if you had an a factored out, we would have ended up with negative b over 2a. And the y-coordinate is the associated f of whatever that x-coordinate is. So you would simply plug back in negative b over 2a into the parabola to compute the y-coordinate of the vertex. So for an example, let's look at f of x is x minus 3 squared plus 2. Well, the vertex, since this is in vertex form, we have x minus h, so h is 3, plus k, so k is 2. The vertex is simply 3 comma 2. So we can also see how we get this uh, vertex of 3, 2 using graph transformations. If you replace x with x minus h, that is the same as shifting the graph h units horizontally to the right. And if you have a plus k, the graph is shifted k units up. So let's begin with the graph of x squared and convert it into the graph of f of x equals x minus 3 squared plus 2. So here is the graph of y equals x squared. We saw it a few slides ago. The vertex, the bottom of this parabola, is exactly at 0, 0. Now we shift three units to the right. Okay, when you have an x minus h, you have shifted h units horizontally to the right. So we shift it to the right, three units, and our vertex is now at three, zero. But then we have a plus two, so we move everything up two units, and now the vertex is at three, two, which is exactly the vertex we would have read off from the vertex form here. So that's why you get that vertex. It is a graph transformation of the original y equals x squared. Now, how can we find the vertex of a parabola in general form? We've already stated that if you go through the work of completing the square, the x-coordinate will be negative b over 2a, and so the y-coordinate is what you would get out if you simply plugged that into the function f of negative b over 2a. So for example, let's take 2x squared plus 8x plus 5. Here a, the number multiplying x squared is 2, b, the number multiplying x is 8. So negative b over 2a is negative 8 over 2 times 2, which simplifies down to negative 2. Now we take that negative 2 and plug it into the original function. g of negative 2 is going to be 2 times negative 2 squared plus 8 times negative 2 
plus 5. And if you simplify all this down, you'll get exactly minus 3. So we got an x coordinate of minus 2 and an associated y coordinate of minus 3. So the vertex is minus 2, comma, minus 3. Now, if we wish to find the x intercepts of a parabola, we're going to do it the same way we would find the x intercepts of any function. To find the x intercepts of a function, set the function equal to 0 and then solve for x. So for example, find the x-intercepts of f of x equals x squared plus x minus 6. Well, we set the function equal to 0, so x squared plus x minus 6 is equal to 0. Now we can do this one of two ways. We can factor the parabola if we can see how to do it, or you can always use the quadratic formula because we have a quadratic set equal to 0. In this particular example, x squared plus x minus 6, factoring is rather doable. We're looking for two numbers that multiply to minus 6 and add to positive 1, and we don't have to worry about any fanciness because there's only a coefficient of 1 there. So this factors as x plus 3, x minus 2. 3 and minus 2 multiply to minus 6 and add to plus 1. So how can x plus 3 times x minus 2 equal 0? Well, this is just a number, x plus 3. This is a number, x minus 2. How can one number times another number equal 0? One of the two numbers must equal 0. Either x plus 3 is 0, in which case x is minus 3, or x minus 2 is 0, in which case x is equal to 2. So the x-intercepts are x equals minus 3 and x equals 2. In the previous example, we could factor essentially by looking at it and kind of squinting, trying hard. That doesn't always work. However, if a quadratic polynomial is difficult to factor using that sort of guess and check technique, the quadratic formula will always work. So the quadratic formula states that if you have a general form quadratic ax squared plus bx plus c and it's set equal to zero, this is solved by x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all under the radical and then that entire expression divided by 2a. In general, you don't need to worry about memorizing this. Depending on your particular course, it may simply be given to you as part of a formula sheet. However, Truth be told, you're going to end up using it so many times that most people end up memorizing it regardless. So for example, let's solve 2x squared plus 8x plus 5 is equal to 0. We identify that a is the number multiplying x squared, which is 2, b is the number multiplying x, which is 8, and c is the number hanging off by itself, which is 5. What's very important, by the way, is that it is equal to 0. If we didn't have 0 on the other side here, the quadratic formula would not be useful to us. But we do, so it is. So we simply plug a equals 2, b equals 8, c equals 5 into the quadratic formula, and we get negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 8 squared minus 4 times 2 times 5, all divided by 2 times 2. This simplifies as negative 8 plus or minus root 24 over 4. Now, root 24 can be simplified a little bit, but you could just plug these into a calculator, depending on what is considered appropriate for your course, and get approximately negative 0.775 and negative 3.225. Now, how do we graph a quadratic function? There's a three-step process that we're going to go through. First, determine whether it's concave up or concave down. Then find and plot the vertex and intercepts. Then connect the points with the appropriate quadratic curve with the appropriate parabola, plotting additional points if necessary. So for example, let's look at a parabola. h of x is 2x squared minus 6x minus 8. Find the vertex, x-intercepts, and graph. Now, because the number multiplying x squared is positive, it's 2, that is concave up. Whatever shape we get, it should be a parabola opening upward. The vertex is given by x equals negative b over 2a, which here is negative, negative 6 over 2 times 2, which is 1 and a half or 3 halves. Then we plug in 3 halves into the function to get out the associated y coordinate. So here you would get 2 times 3 halves squared minus 6 times 3 halves minus 8. That will resolve down to minus 12 and a half. So the vertex is at 1.5 comma negative 12.5. The x-intercepts are found by solving where is this function equal to zero. Now this can be factored. If you don't see how to factor it, you can simply use the quadratic formula. It's fine, but this can be factored. A two factors out of the entire expression. 
Now you have a 1x squared, so you're looking for two numbers that multiply to minus 4 but add to minus 3. That's just going to be a minus 4 and a plus 1. Now how can the product of 2 times one number times another number be 0? One of those has to be 0. If x minus 4 is 0, then x is 4. But if x plus 1 is 0, then x equals minus 1. So we have found the x-intercepts to be 4 and minus 1. Great, so we have found the vertex and the x-intercepts. So we found that this parabola is concave up because the leading coefficient, the number multiplying x squared, is positive. We found the vertex to be 1.5 comma negative 12.5, and we found the x-intercepts to be 4 and minus 1. So let's plot the vertex and the x-intercepts. So here is our vertex, 1.5 negative 12.5. Our intercepts are at 4 and minus 1, and remember x-intercepts are found with y equals 0. And now we just need to connect these points with a parabolic curve with a parabola and the vertex tells you exactly where the very bottom of this parabola is. So if we draw a curve to connect them it would look something like this. And here we have the graph of h of x is 2x squared minus 6x minus 8. Now let's look at some quadratic inequalities. We have the same parabola from before, 2x squared minus 6x minus 8, but we might be interested in solving where is this bigger than or equal to 0, or where is it less than 0. Now from the previous slide, we have a graph of this parabola. So for part A, we're looking for where is the y-coordinate bigger than or equal to 0, and for part B, we're looking for where is the y-coordinate negative. So here is the graph, and we've split it up into where is the y-coordinate bigger than or equal to 0? That's blue. Where is the y-coordinate less than 0? That's red. So the blue region corresponds to which x values? All of these x values are going to give me parts of the curve way up here, up to and including x equals minus 1, because here we were allowing 0, equals 0 is allowed here. All of this is not going to give me y values bigger than or equal to 0. So all the x values up to and including minus 1, then none of these. However, starting again at 4, we get y values that are bigger than or equal to 0. So it's all x's up to and including minus 1, but also, and this is the union symbol, all x's including 4 and beyond. For y values that are less than 0, it's everything else. Okay, so it's starting at x equals minus 1, but not including it. If x equals minus 1, y equals 0, and for part b, we're not allowing it to equal 0. And then all of the x values up to, but not including 4. So we would have this interval here from minus 1 to 4, but not including either endpoint. This notation can be a little confusing, by the way. This is not the point, negative 1 comma 4. This is the interval of all x's in between, but not including minus 1 and 4. Admittedly, it's a duplication of notation, but try to keep them separate in your mind. Now for our next example, we'll find the equation for a quadratic function given the graph of its parabola. So here we have the graph of a parabola, and the easiest way to do this will be vertex form, provided the vertex of the parabola can easily be read off of the graph. Now on this graph, the vertex really appears to be at exactly x equals minus 1 and y equals minus 4. So we're going to set the vertex to be at minus 1 comma minus 4. This gives us h is minus 1 and k is minus 4 quite directly. So now we know that f of x is a times x minus negative 1 or x plus 1, all squared, plus k, so minus 4. So we've got a lot done. Okay, f of x is a times x plus 1 squared minus 4. We just don't know the value of a. So now what we need to do is find some other point. It doesn't really matter what it is, but x equals 0 with y equals minus 2 is a pretty straightforward one to spot on this parabola. So we know if we plug in x equals 0, we should get out y equals minus 2. So we don't know the value of a, but if x is 0 plus 1 squared minus 4, what are we going to get out? We should get out minus 2. So we simply substitute in x equals 0 and set y equals minus 2 because we know 0 comma minus 2 is on the graph. 0 plus 1 is just 1. 1 squared is 1. So we just get a minus 4 equals negative 2, which we can solve for a quite directly as a is 2. Therefore, the equation of this parabola is a, which is 2, times x plus 1 squared minus 4. And this gives us uh, exactly the vertex of minus 1 minus 4. And this value of a we found by testing one point that was not the vertex. Any other point than the vertex that you can spot will be enough for this technique.
When working with quadratic functions and applications, the vertex and x-intercepts are often very, very useful to us. The vertex corresponds either to a maximum or minimum value of the function. Specifically, if the parabola is concave up, then the vertex corresponds to the minimum possible value of the function, whereas if the parabola is concave down, then the vertex gives you a maximum value for the function. As an example, the monthly revenue achieved by selling x calculators is given by the quadratic function r of x is 55x minus 0.2x squared. Notice this isn't exactly in general form because the x squared term didn't come first, so pay attention to that. The monthly cost c of selling x calculators is given by c of x is equal to 22x plus 250. This is not a parabola, that's a linear function, a mx plus b, 22x plus 250. How many calculators must be sold to maximize the revenue, and what is the maximum revenue? The profit, p of x, is given by revenue minus cost, find the profit function. And finally, how many calculators must be sold to maximize profit, and what is the maximum profit? This is a very standard sort of problem for this sort of thing. So as a solution, the revenue function is a concave down parabola. If we write it in general form, we put the x squared term first, it is being multiplied by negative 0.2. So with a negative leading coefficient, this is a concave down parabola, which means that it will have a maximum. This makes sense. We're asked to find a maximum revenue anyway. So let's find the vertex. The x-coordinate of the vertex will be at negative b over 2a. b is the number multiplying x, that's 55. a is the leading coefficient, that's negative 0.2. Punch this down into a calculator, you get 137.5. What is the associated y-coordinate of the vertex? Simply plug that into the revenue function to get 3,781.25. So the maximum revenue is achieved when 137.5 calculators are sold with the associated maximum revenue of $3,781.25. Of course, the number of calculators sold should be a whole number. Now, parabolas have this nice symmetry. So if the absolute maximum is at 137.5, Adding 0.5 or subtracting 0.5 will give you the same result. So you can use either 137 or 138. Now, if this had been 137.82, then the nearest whole number would be 138, rounding up. But we're at exactly the middle, 137.5, so it doesn't matter which way you go. So the maximum revenue is either at 137 or 138 calculators. And if you plug either of those into that function, you'll get $3,781.20 as your maximum revenue. Next, the profit is given by revenue minus cost. Find the profit function. So we simply take our revenue function of 55x minus 0.2x squared and subtract the cost function 22x plus 250. Just observe that this minus has to be distributed across the whole thing. So we have 55x minus 22x, that's 33x. We have a negative 0.2x squared and a minus 250 is our only constant term. Now this is a different quadratic function than the revenue function we started with, but it is still a quadratic function. So for part C, we can find its vertex. The x-coordinate of the vertex will be at negative b over 2a. b is 33, a is negative 0.2. This works out to be 82.5. The y-coordinate of the vertex is what happens when you plug that in, 1,111.25. But again, 82.5 calculators is not a whole number, so if you round it in either direction, because we're at exactly midway between, either 82 or 83 calculators will give you the maximum profit with the associated maximum profit of $1,111.20. Now, quadratic functions are also used in physics to model ballistic motion, our first introduction to how objects move in space. So the motion of a projectile is very often modeled with a quadratic function. So for example, a projectile fired from a 500 foot cliff follows the path given by h of x is negative 0.002x squared plus x plus 500, where x is the horizontal distance the projectile has traveled. So here's a little graph of what this would look like. Observe, if you plug in x equals zero, these terms vanish and you just get 500. So when x is zero, when you have not traveled, you are at a height of 500. Hey, the cliff was 500 feet tall. Then if you plot this parabola, you'll see that it goes up for a while and then starts to come down. We know it's of that uh, concavity, it's concave down because the leading coefficient is negative. We know it goes through this point. How exactly this shape goes, we don't quite know yet. 
So find the maximum height and how far from the cliff will the projectile hit the ground. So first to find the maximum height, we're looking for the vertex and our parabola given at the top of the slide now was already known. Now the X coordinate of the parabola is negative B over two A. Looking at our general form parabola, we have B is positive one and A is negative 0 0.0002. You compute all this down, you'll get 2,500. So there's our X coordinate. The maximum height therefore occurs when X is 2,500. So we simply plug that into our function you would compute negative 0 0.002 times 2,500 squared plus 2,500 plus 500, that's 1,750. So the maximum height is 1,750 feet. For the second part, the projectile will hit the ground when its height is zero. So now we need to solve when is h of x equal to zero. So we just need to solve that for x. Here is h of x being set equal to zero. Uh, I don't want to factor this. The quadratic formula doesn't look very pretty, but if you've got a calculator, it's not that bad. Notice that A is negative 0 0.0002, B is plus 1, C is plus 500, so we have negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4 times A times C all over 2A. Punch this into a calculator and you'll end up with negative 458 or 5,458. Why are there two answers? Well, because the quadratic formula gives us this plus or minus. So one of them gives us this, the other gives us that. X equals minus 458 doesn't make any sense here because X represented a distance traveled from the cliff. So as we fire our projectile, that distance is going up. So starting from zero, it's going up. Negative distance doesn't make a lot of sense in this particular example. In other examples, it very well might. Therefore, X should be positive. So we go ahead and say that the projectile hits the ground 5,458 feet from the cliff.